16. Revelation chapter number 16 today. With the help of the Lord, I'm going to go through this whole chapter. 21 verses soon. <laughs> Judge. 
want us to see today. And Lord, may we walk out different than what we came in. May we walk out, dear Lord, being thankful that we're saved, thankful that we know that our Redeemer lives, and thankful that we know, God, that according to your word as Christians, we will not go through this period of time. But Lord, I pray that you would help us to have a burden for our lost friends and family. Because, Lord, if they don't get saved, there's a possibility they could go through this. For it's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. When you think about that, I, I, as I was praying and I thought about that, friends and family that you have that are lost, we read the book of Revelation, a lot of times we put that way, way, way out in the future, but do you realize that if the Lord came back today in less than seven year period of time, Chapter 16 will take place on the face of this earth that we live in. That's something to think about. If you've got friends and family that are not saved and don't claim Jesus as their Savior, folks, as I said last week and the week before, now is the time to get busy praying like we've never prayed before. When we study this, we're going to see seven judgments that will fall upon the face of the earth. Seven different judgments. The first judgment that we see is found in verses 1 and 2. The Bible says, And I heard a great voice out of the temple saying to the seven angels, Go your ways and pour out the vials of the wrath of God upon the earth. And the first went and poured out his vial upon the earth. And there fell a noisome and grievous sore upon men, which had the mark of the beast, and upon them which worshipped his image. The first thing that I see here is the judgment on sinners. Now, what's really interesting as you study this is we find that only unbelievers and most likely all unbelievers, as the Bible says, will be affected by this incurable, open, oozing, painful sore that will fall upon them. I, I don't know if you've ever had one. I think I've had two in my lifetime, boils. If you've ever had a boil, it's like a pimple on steroids. Mm -hmm. And it hurts extremely bad. Very painful, very sensitive. We don't know exactly what this sore will be, but the word sore there in the Greek means an ulcer. And we, we sometimes think of having one. I believe this will be Body-wise, I, I think it's going to be more than one sword that's going to fall upon mankind that they're going to get. And as according to the word, the Bible says that it is noisome and grievous. That, that means it's bad and evil and painful and will hurt extremely bad. I want to read uh, a portion of scripture that I, that I found in Zechariah chapter 14 verse 12 says, now this will be the plague which the Lord will strike all the people who have gone to war against Jerusalem. Their flesh will rot while they stand on their feet, and their eyes will rot in their sockets, and their tongues will rot in their mouths. I believe that Zechariah is giving us a foresight, a foretaste, of this painful sore that's going to fall upon the face of the earth to all unbelievers, to all who've rejected Jesus Christ as their Lord and Savior, to those who re rejected the faith, rejected the grace and the mercy of God. The Bible says that they will have sores all over their bodies that will be extremely painful, incredibly painful, and unable to to be incurred, that there will be no drug, there will be no medicine that will take care of it. No, no soothing ointment to put on it to make it go away. And when we read that, we find that it is foul and loathsome. It is bad and evil. That's the first thing. Now, that's 
just simply means every single life that's in the sea is going to die. Every soul of life dies that's in the sea. Now, when we think about this, it, it, one th I'll just point this out real quick. If you go back and you'll study, I think it's somewhere around chapter 7 through chapter 12 of the book of Revelation, uh, the book of Exodus, the judgments, the ten plagues that God sent upon the nation of Egypt. And then when you go back to the, the trumpet judgments in Revelation chapter 8 and 9, you're going to find there's a lot of diff a lot of things that are a lot like what happens here. But here's what I want you to understand. What took place in the book of Exodus fell only on the people of Egypt and Egypt only. When you go and you study chapter 8 and 9 of the book of Revelation with the seven trumpets, only one-third of the population, only one-third of the seas and the rivers were affected. Here, what we're seeing is not localized, but it is worldwide. These angels, this angel here comes, and he pours out his vial on the sea, and it became as the blood of a dead man. And every living soul in the sea died. Every living creature died. Now, that's really hard for you and me to believe. That's hard for you and I to fathom. If you've ever been to the ocean, you've ever been to the beach, you stand on the seashore, what you're seeing is just a speck of the seas worldwide. The world is covered, almost 70% of the whole earth is covered by sea. That's a lot of seeds. And the Bible says that he's going to pour out that vial, he's going to pour out that bowl on the sea, and the sea is going to turn, as it were, the blood of a dead man. The blood of a dead man coagulates. It thickens. It darkens. And the Bible says that every single fish, every anything from a little minnow up to the largest whale in the ocean is going to die. I found this to be extremely interesting. And I do want to read this. I wasn't going to, but I do want to take just a moment to read this. In 1947, the community of Venice, Florida, awoke to thousands of dead fish along the beaches and a stinging, choking gas in the air. Some blame nerve gas, others a chemical spill, but scientists soon discovered the cause, and they called it the red tide, T-I-D-E. -E. Although this was the first scientific documentation of this catastrophic event along the Florida coast, reports of similar events have been recorded as far back as the mid-1800s. Red tides are caused by several species of marine plankton, microscopic plant-like cells that produce potent chemical toxins, potent neurotoxins, these toxins cause extensive fish kills, contaminate shellfish, and create severe respiratory irrita irritation to humans along the shore. As red tide blooms, the density of red tide organisms increase to several million cells of each liter of seawater, and the affected areas expand to square miles. It goes on to say that it kills all the fish that are within the area of the red tide and it puts out a gas and an odor that is toxic to human beings. So now just imagine, now I'm not saying that a red tide is what God's going to do, but if that's what he's going to do, just imagine how it would stink for thousands. If you'd lived in that little area there in Venice, Florida, and you walked out of the beach and there was thousands and thousands of fish that were dead laying on the seashore, on the on the beach there, how bad that would stink and how bad that would smell, and then not being able to breathe because of the fumes of the toxins that were in the air, imagine that being worldwide. Mm. And all the seas. I mean, as a Navy guy is a sailor that spent 10 years riding submarines around the world. I can tell you, there's an awful lot of ocean out there. And according to the Bible, he's going to, this angel is going to pour out his bowl, and all the oceans of all the world are going to be turned into a red tide or black blood. It's going to stink to the high heavens. It's going to cause major disaster when it comes to food because. A lot of the earth's population, there's some people that don't like.
like seafood, but there's a lot of us who do like seafood. And it will be catastrophic when it comes to the way people eat. Not only are we going to see the angel pour out sickness upon mankind, the judgment upon sinners, the judgment upon the seas, but then in verses 4 through 7, we see the judgment falls upon the springs. The Bible says, And the third angel poured out his vial upon the rivers and the fountains of water, and they became blood. And I heard the angel of the water say, Thou art righteous, O Lord, which art and was and shall be, because thou hast judged thus. For they have shed the blood of the saints and the prophets, and thou hast given them blood to drink, for they are worthy. And I heard another, and I heard another, oh, excuse me, and I heard another out of the altar say, Even so, Lord God Almighty, true and righteous are thy judgments. There's a Bible verse that we've quoted many times that says you will reap what you sow. And that is true a lot in life. Do you not understand that? What you, it, it is, I, I point this out all the time, the other, uh, last week or so, I planted green beans. They're coming up. And hopefully and prayerfully, in a little over a month or so, I'm going to reap some green beans. If you reap good things in your life, you will, if you sow good things in your life, you will reap good things. If you sow hatred and discontent, you will reap that. These people that are that the Bible's talking about have killed the prophets and the saints of God. He shed their blood. And so God is going to give them back what they sowed. They sowed in blood, they're going to reap in blood. The oceans, the seas are turned to blood, and now the springs and the lakes and the water. I personally, along with a lot of other Bible scholars, believe that what will take place was even your well water will be turned to blood. Even the streams that are around here and the lakes and the, and the rivers around us will be turned to blood. Now think about that. Not only is all the creatures in that going to die, but then there's going to be no fresh water. How are you going to drink? What are you going to drink? What are you going to wash with? We were kidding about not being able to take a bath or shower the other night. Well, think about it. If you couldn't for months and months or weeks and weeks, if you had to go on and on and on without being able to take a bath, what would you do when you got all these sores and you can't wash the sores because you got no water to wash the sores with? What are you going to drink? It's going to get bad. And it's going to get worse as you study this and go on and you find that his judgments, the Bible says, are righteous. For fresh, Think about this. When you go back to the trumpets in, in Revelation chapter 8 and you see one of the trumpet judgments was the fact that the water was turned to blood. A third of the waters were turned to blood. So there's already a shortage. Then when the two witnesses come that the Bible speaks about, and they preach in the city of Jerusalem, the Bible says for three and a half years, during that three and a half years, they have the power to shut up the heavens that it doesn't rain. So for three and a half years, it doesn't rain. For three and a half years, a third of the waters are turned to blood. Now, all the waters are turned to blood. What would you drink? You say, well, there's other things besides water. Most everything that's made that's besides water is made with water. It takes water to make those drinks. You say, well, I drink lemonade. Well, lemonade is 90%, 95% water. You can't drink You can't go to Bojangles and get no tea because they've got no tea because tea's made with water. So what you going to do? Randy's going to freak out. Good thing you ain't going to be here, Randy. But it's going to be bad, and it's going to cause major disastrous times all over the face of the earth because of the fact
So we see that there's the judgment on sinners, there's a judgment on the sea, the third is a judgment on the springs, and then when you get to chapter uh, verse number 8 and 9, we see that there's a judgment on the sun. Now, the first three come to earth. The fourth one goes to the sun. The Bible says, And the fourth angel poured out his vial upon the sun, and power was given unto him to scorch men with fire. And men were scorched with great heat, and blasphemed the name of God, which had power over these plagues, and they repented not to give him glory. You know, most people today, when trouble and heartache and trials and sickness and death come your way, even those who don't claim to be Christians many times will cry out to God for help. But here the Bible says, after the sores, after the judgment on the sea, after the judgment on the springs, the Bible says that he's going to pour out a bowl and it's going to affect the sun. And God's going to reach over and turn up the dial on the sun, and the sun's going to be given that power to heat so bad that it's going to feel like the atmosphere is on fire. I mean, think about it. Have you ever been anywhere? At any, you can feel it around here sometimes. You know some of them days when it gets up in the high 90s, and you go outside, and there's no breeze blowing? And you walk out, and that sun hits you, and it's like, wow. I mean, it, it's like opening the oven to get out a cake that you bake. When you open that oven and the heat comes out at you, that's what it's going to be like on the face of the earth. Now, combine them together with me. You've got sores head to toe. You've got sores all over your body that are extremely painful that hurt, and there's nothing you can do, nothing you can take to make the pain go away. Then you've got this stench that comes from the blood of the seas and the stench from the blood of the spring water and the lakes and the rivers that are around you that they stink. You know, there. you say, well, there's no water around my house. There's something around your house. There's a pond out behind my house. That pond's going to be turned into blood, and it's going to stink. And when you get all the stinking that's going on and the fact that you don't have much of anything to eat because it hasn't rained for three and a half years and now you've got the heat turned up on the sun, add all that together and it's going to be pretty bad. Wouldn't you agree? Yes. So why in the world would you not put your... You say, but I don't believe any of this is going to happen, preacher. I don't believe any of it's going to take place. Folks, I'm sorry to tell you this. It doesn't matter whether you believe it or not. God said it, and that settles it. It is going to take place, and it is going to happen, and it's going to be so bad, God's judgment in wrath is poured out upon the face of the earth like we've never seen, like we, like we never want to see. It's going to be poured out. And so he says that the sun's going to be turned up, and it, it's going to scorch men. Men are going to be burned. But what is sad, you want to talk about a picture of the heart of mankind. Verse 9 gives it to us. He says, men were scorched with great heat, and they blasphemed the name of God, which had power over these plagues. And they repented not to give him glory. That shows you how man really is. And it shows you how man really thinks about God. Where did they learn this from? Back in chapter 13, the beast, the Antichrist, comes up. And listen to what he does in verse 1, chapter 13. And I stood upon the sand of the sea and saw a beast rise up out of the sea, having seven heads and ten horns. Upon his horns ten crowns, and upon his head the name of Blasphemy. Verse number 5. And there was given unto him a mouth speaking great things and blasphemies, and power was given unto him to continue 42 months, or three and a half years. Verse 6. And he opened his mouth in blasphemy against who? Against God. To blaspheme his name and his tabernacle and them that dwell in heaven. So what you see is the Antichrist, who is this ruler over the face of the earth, on the earth, during the time of the tribulation. He comes up 
and the first thing he does is three times in six verses, he blasphemes God. So where did these people learn to do what they're doing from their master, the Antichrist? And so instead of falling on their knees and crying out to God for mercy, the Bible says they blaspheme God. Folks, look around you today that know what's happening on the face of this earth is people are blaspheming God left and right. They're trying to tell us today that the Bible does not condone, the Bible does not condemn homosexuality, that the Bible does not condemn transvestites and all the transgender movement. I'm here to tell you God made two people, male and female. Amen. He made a man to marry a woman, not a man to marry a man. He made Adam and Eve, not Adam and Steve. God made no mistakes. And people say, well, I was born a girl, but I identify as a guy. I don't care what you identify with. If you're a woman, you have female chromosomes. And if you're born a man, you have man chromosomes. There's XX and XY, and you are one or the other. Amen. God didn't make a mistake. You are what you are. And you cannot change it. No surgery can change it. You'll still have the same chromosomes. You can do all the dress up you want, all the makeup you want, and you still are what you are. God doesn't make no mistakes. And we live in a world where they're telling us that God, that, that this, this Bible doesn't mean what it says. When it said a man shouldn't lie with a man, oh, he's talking about boys. No, he's not. He's not talking about man lying with boys. He's talking about a man lying with a man and having a relationship with a man as he would with a woman. God don't make mistakes. And so what we see here is God is pouring out his wrath upon mankind and all they can do is blaspheme God. When tragedies happen all across this world today, they blame Mother Nature. Who, who is Mother Nature? God. God. Now you can call what you want to, but when you say Mother Nature sent a tornado, the Bible says in the book of in Micah, that God has his way in the whirlwinds and in the storms. God is the one that drives the tornadoes and the hurricanes and the storms. He's the one that sets up the drought. You say, well, why would God do that? Because of the sinfulness of mankind all across the face of the earth. God is saying, I've just about had it up to here. By the time you get to Revelation 16, God's had it up to here. Yeah, and he's pouring out his wrath. You better be getting ready. So he says, there's the judgment on sinners, there's the judgment on the sea, there's the judgment on the springs, then there's the judgment on the sun. Now there is a diversity that takes place, a, a little change, if you will, that takes place in verses 10 and 11. And the fifth angel poured out his vial, now listen to this, upon the seat or the throne, depending on which vial you're carrying, the seat for the throne of the beast. And his kingdom was full of darkness. And they mauled their tongues for pain. And here it is again. Blasphemed the God of heaven because of their pains and their sores. And repented not of their deeds. Now, the word there in the King James is seat. That word seat means a throne. And he says that he's going to pour out his fifth angel is going to pour out his vial, his bowl upon the seat of the beast, the throne of the Antichrist. And what happens when he pours that out is darkness falls upon his kingdom. Now some people say, well, wait a minute. You just read where God poured out his the the bowl upon the sun and the sun was dialed up and it heated so hot that it burned man everywhere they was and now you're telling us that God is going to pour out another bowl and this bowl is going to be poured out and it's going to cause darkness now here we can look at it one of two ways I, you can look at it number one that God's going to pour it out and darkness physical darkness will fall upon the face of the earth now let me tell you something if God can step out on nothing and make everything you see 
God can surely turn up the heat on the sun and make it dark at the same time. Sure that ain't no thing. Have you ever had any of these hot summers when it's 9, 10 o'clock at night and it's dark as it could be and it's still 85, 90 degrees outside? So God can do that? He can certainly turn it up and make it even hotter, even in the darkness. I personally believe that what he's talking about is he's going to send a darkness over the economic, religious, and spiritual theme of the Antichrist. And it's called confusion. And he's going to confuse them to the point where they won't know whether they're coming or whether they're going. God can do that. He's done it in the Old Testament, done it in the New Testament. He's doing it today, and he'll do it then. And so he pours out that vial, that fifth vial, and the kingdom, it, read how it says, upon the seat or the throne of the beast and his kingdom was full of darkness. And I told you at the beginning, these compile upon, one upon another. They don't go away because read the end of that verse. And they gnawed their tongues for pain and blasphemed God of heaven because of the pain of their sores. So in verse 11, the fourth vial, or the fifth vial is poured out and they're still under the pain of the first vial that was poured out at the beginning. Hadn't went away. So they got... Pain from the sores, the stench and the toxicity of the air of the blood. Nothing much to eat, nothing to drink, and then they get heated up by the sun and they're burning up everywhere they go. And I mean, have you? How many of y'all ever had a sore and you go to the beach and you get that sore out in the sun and that salt water hits that sore and the sun hits that sore and it intensifies the pain and the agony of that sore. That's what's going to take place. And the Bible says they will gnaw their tongues for pain. Does it sound like a party you want to go to? No, sir. And here, like I said in verse number 11, once again, for the second time, they blaspheme God. They blaspheme God and they repented not of their deeds. Then the Bible says in verse 12 through 16, the sixth vial is poured out. And here we're going to see the sixth vial. It says the sixth angel poured out his vial upon the great river Euphrates. And the water thereof was dried up, that the way of the kings of the east might be prepared. And I saw three unclean spirits like frogs come out of the mouth of the dragon, out of the mouth of the beast, and out of the mouth of the, anti of the false prophet. They, it says, for they are the spirits of devils or demons working miracles which go forth into the kings of the earth and the whole world to gather them to the battle of the great day of God Almighty. Behold, now here, John, uh, John throws in a beatitude from Matthew chapter 6. It says, Behold, I come as a thief. Blessed is he that watcheth and keepeth the garments, lest he walk naked and they see his shame. And he gathered them together into a place in the Hebrew tongue, Armageddon, Mount Megiddo. Here what you see is the sixth vial is poured out. This sixth vial, when it is poured out, it is poured out upon the spirits and their evil spirits. We see the unholy trinity here of the beast, the dragon, the beast, and the false prophet. Tongues come out. In the book of Leviticus, the Bible tells us in the book of Leviticus that frogs in those days, and I, in my personal opinion, they're just as much as the days it was then, they're unclean. They're unclean animals. And so here, what we are, reptiles, whatever a frog is, I know somebody's been dating animals. I didn't do too good in school, so don't, don't blame them. But we see the judgment fall upon these spirits. And we see that when we this river Euphrates is dried up. Now, when you look at this, if you go back to chapter 9 of the book of Revelation, the Bible talked about evil demons being released. And the Bible says there are 200 million of them. The great river Euphrates flows from the northern part of Israel all the way down to the Persian Gulf. I was close to it when I was in the Navy, and we pulled, we pulled into the Persian Gulf. It was my last time before I got out of the Navy. 
because they have approximately 200 million in their army today already. Things are getting ready to unfold real quick. But what we see, the Bible says when he pours out this bowl, the river's dried up, and then the Bible talks about these evil spirits, these unclean spirits like, like frogs that come out of the mouth of the dragon, out of the mouth of the beast, and out of the mouth of the false prophet. And the Bible tells in verse 14, they go throughout the world performing miracles and signs and wonders to draw the world to come against the Israel because as always, even today, in the Middle East, everything that's wrong is blamed on Israel. It's the same thing here. It's all Israel's fault. The Antichrist is going to go throughout with all these false prophets and they're going to go throughout the world and they're going to tell the world, you need to come with us to battle against Israel. The reason you're sick, the reason the water's turned into blood, the reason the sun's burning it is because of Israel. Let's go kill Israel. And so the Bible says at the end of verse number 14, they're going to gather the whole world together to battle of that great day of God Almighty. But here's the thing. They think they're going to an earthly battle, but they're going to a heavenly battle. They think they're being drawn to fight a human battle against Israel. They're getting ready to fight against God himself. No need to tell you how. That's like me going into the ring against Mike Tyson. <laughs> if I lasted 15 seconds, it's only because I outran him. <laughs> I ain't the stupid as I look. I ain't no way I'd get in a ring with somebody like that. That's that just going up against God. You ain't going to win. Nope. Well, let's make it a NASCAR thing. Today's NASCAR. No That's like me going out there in my Nissan and racing Kyle Busch around the track. Who do you think would win? <laughs> you probably. Me probably. <laughs> so, we see what happens here is the judgment pours out upon the hidden spirits. Now, let's look at it. Judgment was poured out on sinners, upon the sea. It was poured out upon the springs, the sun, and sight, the darkness that come across. And then we see the evil spirits. Lastly, is the incredible signs that take place. Verse 17 through verse 21. Now, I want you to listen. I'm going to read this real slowly. Listen to what it says. And the seventh angel poured out his vial into the air. And there came a great voice out of the temple. Now, before we go on with that, let me tell you, that great voice is the same thing it says in, in verse number one. And I heard a great voice, or a loud voice, your version may say. Whose voice is that? It's coming out of the temple. If you'll read chapter 15, verse number 8, the Bible says that the temple was filled with smoke from the glory of God and, and from his power, and no man was able to enter into the temple until the seven plagues of the seven angels were fulfilled. So there's nobody in the temple but who? God. So we know that that great voice, that loud voice that we're hearing is the voice of God himself. So it says, and there came a, a great voice out of the temple of heaven from the throne saying, it is done. Now, think about this. I've got an underline in my Bible. It is done. In the Greek language, it's the same words that Jesus said while he was on the cross when he said, it is finished. Jesus didn't say, I am finished. God's not saying, I am finished. He said, it is is finished. It is done. And there were voices and thunders and lightnings. And there was a great earthquake such as was not since men were upon the earth. So mighty an earthquake and so great. And the great city was divided into three parts. Now, I believe that this you know, in the Bible, in one place, Jerusalem is referred to as the great city. In the book of Revelation, Babylon, which we will find later, Babylon is just the name that they place upon the center hub of the Antichrist, which we'll find out in chapter 17, is Rome. It says it was divided into three parts. And 
the cities of the nations fell. Now, read that right. The cities of the nations fell. And great Babylon came in remembrance before God to give up her, to give her, given to her the cup of the wine of the fierceness of his wrath. And every island fled away, and the mountains were not found. And there fell upon men a great hell out of heaven. Listen to this. Every stone about the weight of a talent. You know what the weight of a talent is? Anywhere between 60 and 100 pounds. Now, I read the other day, I looked it up. So far, the greatest, the biggest hellstone ever recorded was two pounds. Now, that's a big hellstone. Here it says the hailstones that's going to fall from heaven during this great earthquake are going to be about the weight of a talent. Let's just say 60 pounds. That's a huge, that's a huge rock. And it's going to fall out of the heavens. And men, here it is, the third time, men blaspheme God because of the plague of the hell. For the plague thereof was exceeding great. When God says, it is done, the Bible says there's going to be an earthquake upon not the United States, not North America, not South America, not Asia, not the Middle East. There's going to be an earthquake that is worldwide that will rock the city of Rome where Babylon is into a place that it will divide into three different parts. The Bible goes on to say that all the cities of all the nations fell. Los Angeles will be gone. Dallas will be gone. New York, Chicago, and Miami will be flattened and gone by this earthquake. We could go all around the world and talk of London and Moscow and all the cities of all the world will all be gone and will all be flattened. But the Bible says that the islands will disappear. Do not go to Hawaii during this time because it will be gone. The Bible says the mountains will be flattened down. I'm going to tell you something. I've only been in, we had a minor earthquake here several years ago that actually cracked the front porch on my house. And it did the same thing to my mom's carport. I've been one when I was in San Diego. Scared me out of my mind, Tony. When you're sitting in the bed and the bed starts shaking like this and you didn't put a quarter in it, you better get out of it and get go. And I got out of there, ran down them steps and got outside. Scared me to death. And that was only like a point, you know, 2.0 or something. This will be a 12 point plus earthquake that's going to take place. And the world is going to be flat. The cities are going to be gone. And God says, now. If you go to Matthew chapter 25, that's when the Bible says that Jesus is going to come back and set up his millennial kingdom here on this earth. As I've told you, when you go through the book of Revelation, it is not in chronological order. What happens here at this point in time when he says it is done, the great white throne judgment is the next event that's going to take place. Folks, we sit around the world today thinking how long is God going to put up with them? That's the same question in, in Revelation chapter 6 that the martyrs ask. How long? And we sit here today and we see what's happening across this world and we see the disgusting things that are taking place in the United States and we wonder how long long is God going to put up with this? I'll tell you, I said it many times, I say it one more time, I'm glad God ain't, I'm glad I ain't God. Amen. Because I would already say, I've had it. I'm done. God is long suffering, not willing that any should perish, but all should come to repentance. God still has the window of grace opened up, but it's about to shut. And the world needs to understand What's happening, and you think what's happening on this earth is good with the, all this movement? I'm here to tell you, it's just opening up the door to the wrath and the judgment of God Almighty. And when he pours it out in chapter 16, it is undiluted wrath. You better know that 
you know that you're saved and on your way to heaven.